Hi, uh, my name is Nabil and welcome to this quick tutorial on how to use Dynamo to number piles in Revit. So if we take a look at the Revit model on screen, we have a number of piles here. And if I select one of the piles, you can see there isn't any information in the mark. Ideally, what we'd like to do is put something like P1, P2, P3, you know, so each pile has its own individual mark. Revit cannot do this out of the box, so I'm going to use Dynamo in order to assist us with this task. So moving forward, I'm just going to go ahead and jump into Dynamo. And I'm just going to show you a quick node that has already been set up, which will change the mark property within Revit and use the components ID to generate a mark. Let me show you. We're looking for a category at the moment. At this moment in time, it's set to sprinklers. We don't have any sprinklers in the project, so I'm just going to go ahead and change this to structural foundations because that's what we want to change. So I'm just going down the list. There's quite a lot of stuff in here, so bear with me. Almost there. There we go. Struck foundations so this is the category we're going to act on we're going to pull all of the elements out of the category we're going to create a list which is just going to generate a list of all of the components within that category we're going to flatten the list and then from that we're going to pull out the elements ident identities or the IDs we're going to turn that into a string and we're going to place that in here. We're then going to act on the mark of the element. So I'm going to go ahead and run this script. It now tells me the run is completed. So if I press this little icon here, looking at structural foundations, if I go to the list, there are all of the structural foundations that we have within the project. I'm now going to flatten the list. And if we just look at the difference between the two here, if I go up to the top of this list, you'll see what the flatten does. Can you see we have zero array here? And now we just have removed that and we now just have an index of components. We're now going to extract the element IDs like so. We're going to convert these IDs to strings. Looks identical, but this is text rather than numeric. And we're going to place that in here. We're going to act on the mark of the element. If I go back to Revit now, you should see that. Try it this way. There we go. We should see that we now have a number here in the mark. So that's all very well and good. However, we need to conform to some kind of standard. So ideally, you'd want to have P1, P2, P3, P4, or something of that nature. So I'm going to go ahead and doctor this existing code block. So let's just go back to there. Oops. Let's just check that. There's nothing in the mark. There's nothing in the mark. Okay. Let's just do another random one. Nothing in the mark. Fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dock to the code so that we're no longer using the element IDs. So I'm going to grab that, delete it. And I'm going to grab that and delete it. Okay, so we still need all the information about the components we want to amend. We now need to add a few extra bit of code in here to enable us to do so. 
so the first thing I'm going to do is go for a list count. So I'm just going to come up to here and just type a list, actually it's already there. And I'm going to go for a count and I'm just going to drag and drop that and place it there. I'm just going to go ahead and just wire that to that. Now if I press this, it will say null. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick run. And there you can see we have 48. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, now I know that I've got 48 components that I need to edit, I need to be thinking about numbering within Revit. So I want to have the code tell Revit that each pile will look at the number that the pile is within the, the selection or the number of components that are there and put a P in front of the number. So for instance, if we've got 48 components, Revit will just then number each one of those components P1, P2, P3, P4, and so on up to 48. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to need a code block just to say that, there we go, let's pull code block through, just so that we can say that we want to go from naught to the number of components within the category. So I'm going to enter my code in here, and naught, dot, dot, and then 48, like so. I'm going to rename these to, because I want to be able to use this later on, rename this, and I'm going to call it number of components. And I'm going to rename this one. Enter number of components. Okay, so if the number of components changes, then all we need to do is input this number into here. Okay, so this should generate a list. If I press run again, there we go, we now have a list of numbers, which is what we want. I'm now going to use a bit of code from the string. So I'm going to go for a string from object, if we have it, here we go. Let's drag and drop that onto here, and wire that through to there, like so. So I'm now turning this list of numbers to a list of text, basically. I'm just going to run that. There we go. Okay. So now I want to insert the letter P in front of this text. So I need to do a string insert. So that's here. String insert drag and drop to there. So the string that I want to insert will be a P. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull string through and I'm going to type in here capital P and then maybe a dash like so and I'm going to wire that through to the insertion point. And I'm going to pull that into there. And now, where do I want this to appear in relationship to this? So it's in the front. So I'm going to go for a number. I might use a, let's have a look. Number, let's just drag that to here. And maybe we'll just put the number zero there. So I want it to be at the front, like so. So what I'm going to do now is run that, just do a quick test, run, and then the run is completed. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. There we go, P0, P1, P2, P3. So now what I want to do is wire this through to here and run that. Run. Okay. Let's take a look at Revit and see what we've got. Fingers crossed. P46. Let's try this one. 
P42, 38, 24, 20, and 8. So there you can see the power of Dynamo and the amount of time it saves you once you build a custom node. So what I'm going to do now is go back to Dynamo, file, save as, and I'm going to call this cat, oops, category renumbering system. So now if I need to do it again for another category, I can just go ahead and do that by choosing the category that I want to renumber and then making sure that I change the count and then press run and it's done. Thanks for watching.